This week on the Rental Report Review. Do you dare walk these steps again? The Exorcist 3, 1990. It crawls, it creeps, it eats you alive. The Blob, 1958. Scream now while there's still room to breathe. The Blob, 1988. Sometimes terrible things happen quite naturally. The Reflecting Skin, 1990. There never was a woman like Gilda. Gilda, 1946. There were so many awesome, interesting, intriguing elements to this that just completely failed to mature and not together. A serial killer film, a detective film, and an exorcist film. Definitely, I think, obviously right, deserving of its own subgenre. None of those were fulfilled. And I'm not entirely sure the studio meddling is to blame. My primary issue with this object is that a writer was in charge. Well, a novelist, to put it more accurately. Every shot, every scene is so clearly constructed by an auteur who thinks in terms of prose paragraphs and who, who thinks shot reverse shot monologuing around viewpoints of theoretical constructs constitutes cinema. Look, it looks great, aside from the afterlife dream sequence. I mean, only a writer... It's got pretty good effects at times, but defaults too much to ethereal visualizations of abstractions guided by a hand that is not, at least at the time of the project, temperamentally suited to the end medium, but who is surrounded by supremely talented collaborators. I give The Exorcist 3 1990 three stars. Look, I don't hate it. I appreciate the earnestness, its hinted aspirations. So much happens off screen, and, and so much dialogue is about things that happen off screen. See, that shit works in novels, but, but not here. Either enact it, reenact it, make the communication of it visually, narratively, cinematically, dramatic. But I don't think it's entirely a coherent movie because of how it's generically unfulfilling. And dare I say is about to look and feel very passe when Silence of the Lambs redefines the serial killer detective story just a year later. I mean, all movies, really. Culture. Exorcist was that, and, and by here, I, I think they lost the essence of what that was. But I mean Hollywood, right? Dave! Doc Hallen's been killed. Doc Hallen? What happened? It's over his place. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed a doc. Can you fucking believe that Steve McQueen is in this? I mean, I knew this, but it still hits you. Yeah, that's Steve fucking McQueen acting a teenager in a breakthrough B-movie sci-fi thriller about a fucking blob. Every one of you watching this screen, look out. They didn't know they had Steve McQueen. Hell, Steve McQueen didn't know he was actually going to be Steve McQueen. It's almost, dare say, adorable to see that severe cuss of cool be fidgety in his quieter moments, not quite motionless yet. But when he bounds over grocery shelves, you see hints of what's to come. He is so ready for some action. I bet he talked about how cool it would be if they could actually do their driving scenes out in the real world. Two teenagers see it first, like a falling star from outer space. Boy, that was close. Hey, come on, I want to see if I can find it. I mean, but he's not the best thing here. This is so elegantly constructed from the personal first encounter through to the societal scale climax, while still keeping it very personal. The cliche is that science fiction is a reflection of the present through the future or whatever the fuck they say. But taking that, this is just after the two world wars, Korea, Sputnik, the Red Menace is brewing. Nothing can stop it. But really, to me, it's every bit as much about the failure of institutions by misplaced trust and authority. Why was that brewing? I give The Blob 1958 four stars. It would have worked without McQueen, but it would not have worked without the effects. Innovative certainly for then, innovative for now. A clear ace for the anti-CGI movement. Also, Annette Corso is absolutely way too good for McQueen's Steve. He really is just like a horse, isn't he? Oh shit, she was in Toolbox Murders? What the fuck? Hollywood, right? This is two trailers, I don't know the difference. I'm not that kind of nerd. If it had a mind, you could reason with it. So instead of picking, I'll indulge in a little more real estate. Remakes, what warrants a remake? Are they warranted? Well, they happen, so let's embrace them. If it had a heart, you could kill it. There are certainly <laughs> certain guidelines. Certainly genius trumps all factors when it can get funding and distribution. I don't think it's a time element that's most important. 
the turnaround time between versions, but some generational change, shift, a new generation takes over an audience demographic, certainly. Special effects generations, shifts in cultural tastes, aesthetics, narratives, genres, genre fashions, step jumps in budget. A remake maybe needs to consciously have a new take, a new perspective. I mean, you don't need... Anyway, this is a 30-year post-reinvention of optical compositing with motion control cameras, post-Vietnam, post-Pentagon Papers, Watergate, Star Wars, Alien, Nightmare, and Elm Street update for the Reagan-Bush years, a brief period in history where actors and spooks ran the country. The Blob. Terror has no shape. It's curious that this film is also low-key kind of more suspicious of power structures than invaders. I give The Blob 1988 four stars. It seems the collaboration between writer-director Chuck Russell and co-writer Frank Darabont was at least creatively <laughs> fruitful and successful. Evidently, it only did $8.2 million on a $10 million budget. I'm reading Chuck Russell said it was basically dumped by TriStar after they acquired it. Anyway, it had a textbook EC Comics structured escalation of stakes and plot devices get you to love or hate every victim character. As much as I love Kevin Dillon, in many ways prefer him to other Dillons and Kevins, as right as he is for this role, I don't think he can open a movie in 1988. I mean, he's no Steve McQueen, not supposed to be. I don't even think you could put the Corys in this. You know, it's actually better with Kevin Dillon. And I think he and it deserves all the appreciation it's getting now. I think you pissed it off. I don't think it's talked about enough yet, though. Everyone I told I was going to watch The Blob, they said, oh yeah, The Blob, the remake. It deserves more than that. It gets a little overweighed by its overall expansion in the latter third, but I think it sticks to landing. It has some stunning practical and VFX, not even for its budget or its era. And it's ruthless AF. Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. I'm sorry, but nothing may grind my gears more than a nihilistic British Gen X commentary on violent American culture being the primary rot on the capitalist imperialist republic that's shot in Canada. Fuck this movie. Yes, it's beautiful. Vigo's brooding and moody and cool and post-acute radiation exposure chic. And it's got a vibe on loan from Wyeth. And the score is trying. Everyone is showing up. Would you like that? But it's just drenched in a certain British, too cool for art school nihilism critique of Americanism, of a masculinity so insecure or repressive of its sexuality that it chases dreams of fortune or violently penetrates anything it can. Be at all surprised. I mean, it's not wrong, but fuck off. It's not unique, it's the disdain from other imperialists that I don't like. I give The Reflecting Skin 1990 2.5 stars. I'm being catty. If you follow my Instagram, you know I'm surrounded by them. I can see why other people would love this film. And I wanted to myself. I used to fear this movie as a child. Even just images of it creep me the fuck out. I thought it was actually about vampires. I wanted to cash that check. Some check, any check. It really ended up just being an anti-love letter to America, and maybe even genre in general, in place of a movie. It really just repeats the same beat or two over and over again and doesn't really end. So much as literally throws his arms up at the sky. He's gone now, Aiden. There's nothing I can do. I mean, it's fine. I've been missold this movie. I don't know what I thought this movie would be. I knew it was on noir lists, but all I ever saw was the clip 
of the hair flip. I didn't realize what was being sold was a baddie tangling with some emotionally complicated suppressions and desires in the form of two criminal lovers from divergent social classes. Starring Rita Hayworth with Glenn Ford. That's what I told Bell and that's what you're going to tell me. I mean, she's not technically the protagonist, but the film certainly revolves around her agency. It's a thriller, an intimate, passionate, corrupted, romantic thriller, and as any good genre film can, if it so chooses, rely on the narrative conventions to carry the beat, it can weave a melody through other things. It can double the entendre and be just as much about the dynamics of courting and coupling and mating and love and trust and the nature of attraction as it is about the rise and fall of gangsters and their gals. Nobody comes out of this clean, but in a way that sparks reflection or conversation or we need more of these sexy thrillers that make us want to talk about what we're really doing out here to each other, to ourselves. For who? For what? I give Gilda 1946 4.5 stars. Now they all know what I am. This doesn't work without Hayworth, surgically crafted from the page to lens and everything in between for her obsidian gaze to slice through every last man in this picture. I can see this programmed right alongside Eyes Wide Shut, Notorious, the same year, Leave Her to Heaven. Call it, what's wrong, darling, noir? This week, my weekly pick of the week is, I guess if you already know me and know that me mentioning it in the same breath as Eyes Wide Shut and Notorious, that would be clue enough to know it's Gilda. Not Radner. This week's bonus feature is Blob Double Feature. Track down a screening, get some friends and pizza and blaze at home. Go down to the video tech and rent a couple discs and form a future survival party. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on Instagram and X to see what movies I'm renting next. And pretty much everything is on my letterbox. Uh, I am going to go watch some more movies. I hope you do too. Video well. Thank you.